Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, hey, hey. What's up, man? Uh, not too much. How are you? Uh, I'm doing alright. Um, I'm alright. So, uh, since last time we talked, how have, uh, things been going for you? Uh, okay, um, I've been, I haven't been able to play too much, um, but for good reasons, we've been doing some traveling and stuff, so all, all fun stuff going on. Nice. Um, but I've been trying, I've been, uh, you know, I just, I just keep trying to do the build, um, that we went over against, um, Zerg, uh, with, uh, you know, making the, making the, um, uh, yeah, basically just how we did it. And, uh, yeah, I, I just played a couple games and, um, it actually went okay. Uh, I did, I did have one game against Zerg where I was able to scout and I was able to see that the drone count was like pretty low. So I was anticipating, um, you know, that them attacking me, which yeah. they did. And, uh, I had some, some void rays up and I was able to hold against them, which was great. Uh, but then my macro sucked, so they were somehow able to come back and beat me anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and then, you know, one other thing that we talked about was uh, just really working on that early game against Protoss for the all-ins. And, yeah, I had, like, a couple of people, like, all-in, like, one base all-in me, and I was able to hold with uh, just kind of keep pumping out units and have the battery there, and uh, uh, eventually they just kind of gave up. So, so it's good. Okay. Uh, nice. And, uh, going forward, uh, do you want to, for like today, do you want to continue on, um, maybe like going down the road where we went down last time with a uh, similar matchup or do you want to switch it up maybe and do work on a different matchup altogether? Like maybe like versus Terran or something like that. Uh, yeah, sorry. You, uh, you cut out for a few seconds, but I assume you're asking if we just want to continue with the other two, uh, the other two races. Yeah, like, yeah, if you wanted to continue on from what we did last time and uh, try to, like, it, understand the builds even more, or if you wanted to, like, switch up, switch it up and do, like, Terran or something this time. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking we could just move on to um, the other races, and then, um, yeah, once I, uh, I, I guess I just need to practice. Oh, he's having some technical difficulties. This man has vanished. Oh, he's back. Huh? Hello? Does it keep dropping on your end too? No. I, I, I just saw you disconnect entirely from the Discord call. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just <clears throat> connected. Whatever. It's back. Um, yeah, I figure I'll, I'll be able to, once I get to practice for it, then I'll be able to uh, have better questions about um, the builds. <clears throat> yeah. No, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, the only thing for the For the beginning part of the Zerg, uh, yeah, against the against the Zerg build, um, when we did the build, I think you forgot to build that third pylon, um, and ended up with a little block. Yeah. Uh, so I guess so when I was doing it, I was doing, um, yeah. So I would do the battery, and then I would do the two gases, and then I would make a third pylon right after that. I think would that I, I think that kind of helps prevent the the supply block. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? So, so the way it should line up, the way it should go, is uh, your first pylon goes down in your natural, your second pylon goes in your main, and you should be uh, your your supply should be enough on the two pylons initially. Up until your natural nexus finishes, and then that should not, and then your third pilot should be going down soon after. But you shouldn't have a problem blocking supply though until uh, you're like in your mid 30s. Uh, like, so the third pylon is after you make your uh, your tech essentially. Like the build is something that goes like this: it goes like pylon, gateway, gas. Nexus, core, gas, pylon, make probes and shit, and then you don't make your, and then you'll be making your, uh, your tech building off of your core, and then making your third pylon. Yeah, so st Stargate, and then, 
Yeah, so yeah, because it was I would be able to make one void ray, but then I would be blocked after that. So I make the uh, I would make the third pylon. Yeah, just after. Yeah, you can make the third pylon uh, during when even like creating the tech off of like what like the stargate essentially. Yeah, and then um, uh, okay, so then after that, uh, I make one one uh, stalker and uh, one. Um, uh, what are those guys' names? Sentry? Sentry, Phoenix. Sentry yeah. Um, and then uh, and then I just I wait on the gateway units until I make my second Void Ray. Should I not do that, or should I have enough to be able to do both? Uh, so, if you, especially if you're currently boosting your gateway at all, at any point in time, it's going to be hard to like afford all of it. But generally speaking, uh -huh. the Stargate should take priority over everything else. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Stargate's definitely the more important structure out of the two. So if you have either structure having to be idle for just a second, definitely make it the gateway and not the Stargate. Okay. And then, um, oh, and then I've just been kind of waiting on making Warp Gate out of the core uh, and instead make the Sentry first. Um, does that see? Like I do, So I'll make the Stargate and then I'll make a Sentry and then I'll do the gateway. I would warp say, I would say you should be making warp gate um right after you make the stargate. Uh okay. yeah, like definitely um don't delay it too long, uh but definitely don't make it don't make the warp gate upgrade delay your stargate because at that point uh you only have right. like one gas. Usually your second one's like just now coming online when you make your stargate or like roughly uh, so like it does take a little bit longer to get that gas initially for that stargate. So that def it definitely does make a difference there. But yeah, definitely don't delay the stargate as much. But don't delay warp gate as soon as you can after you get the stargate for sure. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. And then yeah, I'm just yeah, just just working on it. Um, everything takes me a little bit longer than it should, but uh, I'm, I'm getting there. So I think I just need to be more consistent practicing and actually do some more games and stuff, and then. Um, yeah, and then no worries. Yeah, I guess maybe I, yeah. After that, we'll talk, and maybe we'll have some better questions for you. Yeah, I think uh, it was against Zerg. The, the you're gonna go through a phase as well. This happens to every Protoss, I feel like, um, where Zergs are gonna go. You're gonna go through this phase of dealing with Zerg, with all they do is all in the shit out of you, and you're gonna die a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just requires you to like that, like just really understand like what are the goals and stuff like that, like while you're. Um, in the phase of the game where you can die because it does require a little bit of technical gameplay to not die to all in sometimes from Zerg But once you mm -hmm. get through, once you get through that phase and you start getting used to it more and more and more and the build is like comfortable Dealing with Zerg beyond the, that point is a lot more manageable for sure Okay, and they usually come Kind of right <laughs> after you put up your third uh, base So here's the good way to, to read Zerg, okay? Uh, there's two things about Zerg that are very, 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 very predictable and very common. Uh, the first one is, if the oh he just dropped again. Hello, hello. 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 Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. No, sorry. I don't know. That's that's. Sorry. I know it's frustrating. That sucks. Um, but I'll I'll start over just in case there's anything you missed. Um. Uh, so... Oh, he dropped again. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Shit. I'm sorry, man. That's that's annoying for you. No worries. Uh, so, what I was saying is... Uh, for two things that are really important about Zerg to understand when you, like, you... Early game when you're dealing with this shit. Is, uh, the first one... Is if they... Knowing if they're going to go for like a two base or a one base version of what they're going to do and one base is really obvious because they're not going to have a natural at all It's just you straight up just got across the map and they're on one base Those builds are definitely really fat. He should he dropped again <laughs> Fuck. Uh, The zerg one base builds are definitely really all the like really all in and those hit you probably like it like right around three minutes uh, mm -hmm. super fast and as long as you have your ba your battery up by then and you're not gonna you're probably not gonna really have a, uh, a Stargate unit out right away you're gonna have to definitely maybe do some SimCity walling with like Tetris uh, with like a probe and maybe also like you know 
uh, maybe a battery overcharge, but ideally like a stalker, maybe a sentry, something in your doorway that's going to keep you alive. Um, mm -hmm. But when it, when it comes to like most Zergs who do more standard builds, if they go at least two base or beyond that, timings will always hit you at 3.30 or 3.30 to four minutes is going to be the appropriate Zerg like window to attack. Um, because that's around the time when Zergling speed is going to finish if you go for a hatch first. Uh, so that's one way to read Zerg is to know that but the the time block between 3.30 to 4 minute is really, really, really important. And that's the moment that you're going to die if you're if the Zerg is going to all in you. Uh, so you got to know that that's like a relevant thing you should be looking for. And, in, you know, that's that's definitely a, a crunch time for Protoss. And then uh, what's up? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. OK. Uh, and then the second thing that's really important when you scout with your probe, if your probe is oh, he dropped again. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Uh, -huh. uh another thing that's really important for uh for Protoss to to see for Zerg is if the Zerg takes a creep tumor first or if the Zerg takes a inject larva first on the natural. Because if the Zerg tumors the the natural towards like the third right away, that's more likely a macro play. And if the Zerg injects the base at the natural, that's a lot of shit they're gonna have early, but they have no real control of their side of the map when it comes to defense with creep. So it that's another that's another aggressive move that they're gonna probably just have an influx of larva faster to do a timing attack. Mm, okay. So if you see those with your probe, it just re incentivizes you to probably make sure you're set up well on defense between three thirty to four minutes. Okay. But yeah, other than that, like just getting through that phase of the game can be a little tricky sometimes for Protoss. But once you start getting comfortable with it and knowing how to like always abuse like terrain to your advantage. Mm -hmm. It uh, it becomes a lot easier. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then if you are getting like uh like one base like twelve pool kind of all in, um, do you just you just make your wall with like two two uh, two gateways, mm -hmm. and then you yeah. build like a star gate whenever you can behind it. Uh yeah. Okay. Like I would even say, it was, it, so a good way to respond to something like that, honestly, is maybe don't rush the Stargate so fast. I would mm -hmm. say maybe stay on just one gas for longer now. Don't even take your second gas, okay. and um, get your uh, Nexus still expand. You really still want to expand, but it's going to be harder to afford that expansion now if you got to start making things like Zealots and a faster second gate. Mm -hmm. uh, but just make like range units once you can when the core is done, like Stalkers or whatever, and. Uh, just make your nexus as soon as you can while dealing with that shit. And it's going to delay your second gas and delay your stargate. But if the zerg is super low on eco, you're going to be just fine going into it anyways. As long as you're like okay. using those gateways. Okay. And are you still making probes or do you just kind of yeah, make yeah. enough to... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're still... Uh, if you have to cut a probe here and there for maybe a couple seconds because you really need to make a gateway unit so you don't die, um, that's fine. But ideally, you're still making probes and you're oversaturating the main mineral line. And you, you'll probably even get to a point where you have like 22 probes or 23 probes on it as you transfer to your natural to then saturate your natural. Okay. With, with so the that's excess. fine because you're still, you're still getting more than if you had 16, just not as efficiently. Yeah, exactly. Like you actually still gain benefit from probes up until the point when you hit 25. Because once you hit 25 and above, then you actually get zero efficiency on that 25th probe and everything above it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, and then a uh, huge tip as well. If you notice, this is important to know as well. Okay. Uh, whenever you whenever you are actually getting twelve pulled, try to leave your uh, your probe near the Zerg's base. Uh, unless if you don't want to do this, you have to. There's two ways to do this. Okay. The first way is you leave your probe near the Zerg's base just to see if he's gonna pull drones with it. Like if he's gonna fucking pull all of his drones with his Zerglings. If he does that, you have to build a like a wall off on your base, or you will literally die uh, in the doorway that your zealot or whatever is going to be standing in. Uh, if he doesn't pull a drones, though, you don't have to do this. And the reason why this is important is because if, if the Zerg player does pull drones and you have like a zealot standing in the doorway and you're starting to make more shit out of your gateway as he arrives with like let's say 14 drones and six links initially, 
If he mineral drills your zealot through the door, and your zealot gets started on both sides from drones and lings, your zealot will die, and your wall will break, and then he'll get inside, and you'll just die. But if a zerg pulls drones, and you leave a probe near your doorway, and you build a pylon behind the door, and you like, maybe I could say you know he's gonna do this, and you just pull the zealot inside the door. You can, you can even leave the zealot in the door if you wanted to, it's totally fine, because it will get such good efficiency anyways, if the zerg tries to break through and kill the zealot regardless. He'll, he'll kill more okay. than he's worth, because he's tucked in a corner. But if you build a, a pylon behind him, and wall him out. So the zerg physically, if he mineral walks into your base, yeah, the drones can't go inside, because they get stuck behind a pylon. Uh, that is mandatory. If the zerg pulls drones with a 12 pull. You'll crush it if you do that. Because it'll buy enough time for you to make like stalkers or adepts behind it, and you'll be fine. That's sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, but if you don't, if you don't, if you don't build that pylon though, and he just mineral drills right through you, you'll literally die. <laughs> He'll just be like, "Oh, okay, okay well, um, my zealot just got overpowered, and he's fucking dead." Okay, all right. Yeah, that's sneaky. Cool. All right. Um. So, uh, yes, uh, I mean, if, if uh, I, I'm down to like do like the full coaching session today, if uh, you want to like do it next weekend or something, that's fine too. Um, however you're feeling today. No, I'm, I'm totally fine. good to do it all today. I, oh, I apologize okay. for, you know, no worries. it was not my intention to start a little late with you today. Uh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, but I, I'm totally down to go for the rest of the hour today and. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, should we dive in then? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so do you have, did you have like replays prepared? Do you want, oh, she dropped again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Did you have a, a replay you wanted to look at, or did you want to kind of just uh, create something on the spot? Uh, I think, um, I think, can I just, can we just go over a build for, like, um, Terran? I don't really have a good replay, to be honest. I That's haven't fine. played in a little yeah, while. No worries. Yeah. So, there's a couple ways you can play it. I would say, uh, there's, I would say there's, like, without having to have too much crazy diversity, there's two solid ways you can open up against Terran. And uh, they both work fine. Uh, they'll, they'll both be strong. One way would be really hyper active on expansions and really heavy on the macro side. And it's like it's like it's basically quick expansions with light gas, and you get like a little bit of blink stalker mixed with a fuckload of zealots. And then you uh, can later on you can transition this into heavier gas intake, and you can add in tech beyond what you already have. So like you can add in your templar, you can add in your archon. You can go sky toss. You can add in colossi. You can add in whatever the fuck you want to it. Uh, but it starts off with a very heavy emphasis on mineral and zealot behind blink stalker, and lots of expansions. And the other way you can play, the other style you can play that is a bit more like, um, uh, I guess, like defensively postured, is you can open up with like standard resource. Uh, investments where it's like mineral gas, mineral gas per base, and you go just like quick colossi with uh, with gateway unit support, and then you advance it as you go forward. Like you start off with colossi stalker, add in um, blink, then add, then go up to uh, charge, add in more gateway, then go into storm, and then it, you you gradually take bases with this playstyle. It's it's like it's still kind of fast, but it's not nearly as fast as the first style I said. Like, you'll be on, like, three bases with this style, whereas you'd be on, like, five bases with the gateway style at the same time. But the one, the difference is one build has a lot of gas and one build has almost no gas. <clears throat> Those two styles are probably the most solid, I would say, against Terran that are just easier to learn. Uh, okay. So I think the thing that I find most frustrating against Terran is when they do all their stupid drops, especially when they do their Widowmine drops. Mm -hmm. Um... So, is there like one uh, one build that would kind of help me defend against those? Or um... both of these builds will ideally deal with Medivac really well because you get Blink Stalkers defensively with both builds. Okay. And Blink <clears throat> Blink Stalkers are Blink Stalkers and Pylon placement are probably the Protoss's best tool to deal with uh, her Terran harassment with Medivac. Because if you go, like, let's say you go Stargate, for instance. Stargate mm -hmm. actually is not that great to deal with uh, medevac drops. Because the only unit that can deal with a medevac 
while it boosts around is a Phoenix, and opening up with Phoenix builds is actually super technical against Aaron, right. because that unit's okay. actually terrible versus almost everything besides an air unit. Uh, like, you need to, like, know how to pick your battles really well with Phoenix, especially when you're fighting, like, Marines. Uh, like, that unit can definitely not really pay for itself very well if you don't know how to find opportunities, like, all, constantly. Um, but, yeah, like, with both builds, whether you do the Colossus version or the Heavy Zealots Expand version, they both get Blink Stalkers early. So you can just have, a like, a well-placed pylon setup, which makes it easier to know where medevacs are going to be because you'll see them before they enter your base. And mm -hmm. then, uh, and then yeah, you, just, you literally just blink at them, kill the medevac, and then you're good to go. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, I, don't, I don't really feel strongly <laughs> one way or the other. They both sound okay. good. I, I would say if you don't really care then, because some people are like, I really want to do like the Colossus version, which is totally fine. But if you don't really want to do the Colossus version, like the hardcore, uh, I would recommend doing the Zealot Stalker version then. Uh, the okay. expansion heavy one because if the more if you get good at that build you it's it's basically a, a good branch build where like it's the startup is similar every time but then you can transition to whatever the fuck you want every single game so you can it has a lot of like freestyle opportunity after the opener of like the first like eight minutes of the game or nine minutes of the game like you can do whatever you want after that okay which i feel yeah. like makes it more fun yeah okay. great all right, so I am going to share my screen with you. You can see my perspective while we do it. Uh, and then I'll give you the replay after and everything, just so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Um, all right, we'll do... Are there any maps that you find are uh, weird? I mean, we're not gonna wall off like we do against Zerg, but are there any... before we start, are there any maps you think are just awkward to play on? Uh. Yeah, I mean, the duels are kind of weird, um, especially, um, uh, I'll I, I mean, they have, like, these weird, yeah, like, this one's weird because it has, like, that little baby one off to the side. Yeah, you're talking about a moon dance with a pocket expansion? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I would say, <clears throat> on a map like that, you don't need to prioritize going for that pocket expansion unless you're doing a build that, uh, you fully expect that you need to be defensive on. Like, <clears throat> for instance, this is a good way to explain it, I feel like. If your build is like a three-base build, uh, ideally, and your opponent is doing a standard macro build and no, does not look aggressive at all, and you're not doing anything superly defensive, you're just doing a standard macro build yourself that wants to have three bases. If you're both macroing and you scout that, you can totally take your forward third on this map and not take a pocket third that's super back and like, weird, like a little baby expansion. But... If your opponent is doing something that looks really aggressive and you're like, okay, this guy looks like he wants to fucking YOLO right now and he's going to be really all in or just really, really aggressive in the early game, then it would be a good idea to take your pocket expansion as your third instead of a forward expansion, which is harder to defend mm -hmm. because your opponent's about to be aggressive and it will make your life easier because now you can actually just defend your natural instead of exposing yourself to your third. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like based on if you think you're going to have map control or not uh, based on the build you're doing to the build he's doing. So... If you decide that you're going to be have a build that's less map controlling than he is, but you still really want that third, and you're not going to do something that's going to give you tons of map control early on, then you can take your pocket base. But like, if you if you're just taking a third base, you should never just take the third base by default that's in the pocket because it's worse than a forward base in terms of amount right. of resources. Right. Um, yeah. So is this the one where you have to like uh, mine some of the minerals to be able to get access to it? Uh, no, that is, uh, tropical, or no, 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 what, uh, what the fuck, what the fuck is it? Uh, I just had it, what the hell? Why, what the fuck, am I crazy? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Stargazers, I was like, I literally just clicked it, and Stargazers is the one that's like that. Yeah. Uh, well, cause that's like a full base, but then you have to mine out two mineral patches that are worth 10 in front of your third base. That's like the pocket base. Yeah. It's kind of stupid. I don't know. I, I kind of just ignore them and just play like normal. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's just one of those things where you have to, uh, prepare a probe to de like to open up that expansion about like 30 seconds before you're actually going to take it. Yeah. And the way to um, do it, the, the easiest way to do that is you literally just have one probe mine the further away mineral patch that's 
blocking where the Nexus would go from the Mineral Line. Like, it's important to do that, because if you mine the patch that's closer to the Mineral Line, that's still blocking the, the Nexus. Sometimes the probe will then just run to the Mineral Line after it mines it out, and it'll start mining the actual Mineral Line. So there'll still be one Mineral Patch that's blocking the fucking Nexus. And now it's mining actual Mineral Patches that are, like, where the Nexus would want to mine from. If that makes sense. So it starts mining right, from like right, a right. 1500 mineral patch or 1800 mineral patch. Which right. I'll never mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm down to just do any, any, uh, yeah, any let's, map. we'll do Stargazers. Why not? We'll make, we'll do the weird, the really weird one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So this build, uh, again, what I'm going to be doing. Is I'm going to be opening up with a build that's fast blink stalker, which is uh, ideally going to help us deal with medevacs, uh, any type of medevac harass, and we're going to be doing uh, crazy, crazy fast expansions, and we're going to be getting. Uh, I'm going to pause the game a couple times to talk about scout windows, and we're going to be getting um, gateways accordingly. Like we 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 either are going to be doing standard gateways or we're going to be doing like reinforced heavier gateways because we think our opponent's going to all in. So like that's why okay. scouting with this is a little important because you need to know, you like you can't just do the same thing every time, I like and have like a high success rate. You need to have a little bit of an indicator as to how aggressive your opponent's going to be, and if your opponent's being super greedy and super macro heavy, <coughs> there is a version of this that is like the um, the macro version essentially. That's like optimal macro, and if your opponent is being really uh, aggressive, there is a defensive version of this which is still greedy but. A little safer when it comes to how fast you take your gateways. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And then, yeah, if, at any point in time, as it always goes, uh, feel free to interrupt me if I'm talking. If you have a question and you want to ask. Sure. Okay. So, here we go. Got my probe being made. I am uh, splitting my minerals, getting my close mineral patches stacked. Easy peasy. I'll take a probe and build our pylon behind the mineral line. So I can, we'll, on this one we'll do a, just like a reaper wall off in case we get attacked by a reaper. So a reaper can't run behind our mineral line all day. And uh, uh, for this first probe, you can actually send it to go scout once you have 16 on the mineral line. This is totally fine. You can either scout with this probe or you can scout with the probe that builds the nexus. Either way is fine. The sooner you scout, though, the better you'll understand if you're getting proxied. So if you're worried about early game cheese, I would definitely recommend uh, just sending this guy out, your 17th probe out if you're worried okay. about like a proxy. <clears throat> okay, we'll take our nexus. Take our core. So we could see if the Terran would be doing a proxy build, and we're like, okay, we're good or we're not good. And then with Terran, you don't really need to you don't really need to stay there with Terran. Like I would say staying there against uh uh what's it called? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Zerg would be better because you could see if like you know a, more about what they're doing if you want to. But with when it comes to Terran, you can just literally just leave and it's not a big deal because it's gonna almost always be a Reaper and you're just gonna lose the probe if you stay. <clears throat> okay, so we immediately Chrono Boost out of Stalker. This is like mandatory against Terran. Also with Terran, make a third pylon. Once you start satching the natural, have the first probe that you make it with. Come over here, build a pylon on the high ground for where the Reaper would go, and then start going to your natural to saturate. Uh, that's super important to do that. I'm here in the and then make your sentry out of your, uh, out of your gateway. And then as soon as you have 100 gas, make a, your 
Council and your second gateway. And now we can make another pylon as soon as we can afford it. Add our natural this time. That way we can get a shield battery set up. And now we have the pylon giving us vision in case Reaper jumps into our main. And we have, uh, we're getting ready to make a battery at our natural in case we get attacked by some bullshit early on as well there. Easy peasy. And then once our natural is like 12 probes, we're going to be starting blink. And then right after blink, we're going to be going into, uh, before warp gate's done, we're going to be going into a third base. So now we're going to take a probe, we're going to run straight to the third base. We're going to make a battery as well while we do this. And literally just, don't stop making probes, but as soon as you can afford it, make your fucking third base right now. And now our warp gate should be finishing right about now with double warp ins right after we make the third base. So now warp gates are going to finish. Start kind of boosting our blink upgrade here. We can make a hallucinated sentry uh, phoenix to scout across the map. And now we start making some stalkers. Now, once we have enough money, once we started the third base, let's make another gateway. And now let's make another pylon. And this pylon over here that we're going to make is going to be in preparation for uh, in case we were going to get dropped. And we can make another pylon now as well on the other side of our base. We can go down to bottom right and do the same thing with, uh, uh, what's it called? The pylon at our third base to see the other side. So now we have like, now we're going to start having good vision to see if we're going to get dropped by widow mines or some shit like that. <clears throat> okay. And right about now too is when we want, would want to make a robo for observer. And now that our third base is done, let's go ahead and make our fourth gateway. We're starting our fourth gateway right about now. And we can start getting charge upgrade now too on uh, the council. Because now we're going to have blink done at this point. And now we can go into charge. Transfer some probes down to our third base. And our third base is going to get saturated super fucking fast. We can make another hallucinated phoenix. Scout again. And now, right now, we're about to start our fourth base. So as soon as this probe mines this patch out, we're going to be taking our fourth base in the top pocket base. We can make another pylon with it too. And then we're now at this point, we're going to start making zealots. And we make observer as well. Keep chrono boosting our uh, council. And so <clears throat> I'm going to pause it right here. Uh, <clears throat> so each time we send our hallucinated phoenix out what we should be seeing from the terran is we should be seeing in uh not only like a base count but we should also be seeing an amount of production facilities that the terran has and essentially um what our first sentry scout should see which is really early on is we should we shouldn't should not see too much we should see a terran that's on like two bases you might even catch wind of like a third base being started you might see like oh there's a third command center that's you know, 10% of the way in or 20% of the way in production right now. It's, he's just starting it and he's on like currently three production facilities. Uh, that's standard. The only thing that would be worrisome at the first time you send a sentry out, a, a hallucinated Phoenix out, is if the Terran has like not expanded yet. And you're like, what the fuck? Okay. Like this dude is like your probe scout. Let's say your probe scout didn't get to see an expansion because the Terran had a wall off or something like that. And then your first your first hallucinated phoenix goes out, and he still doesn't have a fucking expansion. At that point, it's time to go scout for a proxy base. And if there's no proxy base as well, uh, there, there's a problem there, and you need to be super defensive, otherwise you might die. So the defensive there would be chrono boosting your gateways instead of chrono boosting your nexus. And maybe making a faster robo so you can have observers faster, because this guy might be going for like quick banshees with cloak or some shit like that. And that would be a serious problem for you if you didn't have an observer. But that's if like he has no fucking expansion on your first hallucination scout. Your second hallucination scout, if he still has not yet started a third base and that's still on, only on two bases, that is going to be a situation where you need to, um, once again, I would say stop chrono boosting your nexus and start chrono boosting more of your gateways. Uh, and use your existing gateways the exact way we've used them so far, even this game right now. 
Like being on four gateways at this point in time is totally fine. Um, but now from this point on, the scouting beyond this point, if the Terran still has not, so like basically the fact that we're on four, ga four gateways with our second hallucination scout is standard. That's fine. It really, the only, the only thing that's really going to make a big difference there is how I'm chrono boosting. If I'm chrono boosting the gateways or if I'm chrono boosting the probes. Chrono boosting probes obviously is the macro side. Chrono boosting gateways obviously is the defensive side. And that is based on how many bases the Terran's on and how aggressive he looks like he wants to be. But beyond this point, uh, beyond the point of uh, your second hallucination scout, from now on, all we care about is... If the, uh, if the Terran feels like they're about to launch a big timing on you, and that's really based on if the Terran has, uh, again, a third base or not. No third base, more likely timing happening. Instead, if there is a third base, more likely Terran's macroing a bit harder, and he's playing more for the standard long game, not so much for the all-in or mid game. Uh, so it really depends on if we're going to take our fourth base and our fifth base and our sixth base Basically, every base beyond three bases, or if we're going to take more gateways faster. And that's really depending on if you feel like the Terran's about to do a timing or not, based on your scouting and how many bases he's on. You will absolutely expand faster than Terran playing this way. It's going to happen. But don't do too many fucking Nexus if the Terran's about to kill you. So if you scout more and more and more, and the Terran's still only on two bases, and you're about to take your fifth fucking Nexus, you're probably going to die. If you're just lighting up on the gateways constantly so the the point i'm trying to make is you just need to understand how many bases terran's working with here <coughs> because if terran's light on the bases you probably want to cut probes for a sec add on more gates and not die deal with the timing and then go back to expanding again this is this is the scare like the the, the moment where you have to decide whether you need more gates or whether you can get away with more macro and you should be scouting with the Hallucination Phoenix on cooldown to figure this out. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So the way I'm doing the build where I've now taken the fourth base, this is under the assumption that we're not getting all in, okay? So fourth base is too greedy if you're being all in. That is too greedy. You should actually be adding on like three more gateways. So instead of having four gates right now, we should have like seven gates. And, uh, in terms of, oh, that's... Uh, oh, sorry, the last thing I was going to say is, and I, I, we talked about current boost allocation being on probes or being on uh, gateways, but just make sure, regardless of what you're doing, there is still current boost allocation that is like mandatory on your council. So, because we want to get as fast as possible blink and then following that up as fast as possible charge, regardless of what we're doing. Uh, my question was going to be, uh, where do you leave your army as you're doing these expansions? At your natural. A okay. At first, at your natural near the battery. Okay. <laughs> so that's why we, like, if you notice, I built pylons on the edges of the map. Yeah. We, ha we have a pylon uh, in the very corner at my top middle natural, and we have a pylon at the very corner at my bottom right third base. And then uh -huh. we, ha we have uh, a pylon as well in the very middle of my base, in, like, the heart of my base where he could um, go through like the middle of my base. That's where the Reaper jump spot is. Uh, right now, if he were to drop me at any point, at any location, my army right now has quick reinforcement to my third base, which is where a lot of probes are. So I could literally just run the probes north for a second and run my army down south, and I could cover that base and not many probes would die. If Honestly, probably zero probes would die as long as I react fast as soon as I see him with my pylon or if he just runs straight to the Nexus. I like from the where the rocks are. Uh, vice versa, if you were to drop the top left base of ours, if that nexus has to be canceled and if a pylon or two dies, that's not a big deal because that's way less uh, impact, way less damage we would take as opposed to losing an entire mineral line. But then because we have that base up there, our main is protected because he can't physically get to our main without us seeing it unless we have a time like warning time, which our army could then quickly reinforce and defend our main with. So. Our army is in, in a ideal position right now to deal with every single base that could get attacked and minimize damage we would take. And then if he just straight up shows up at our natural, we're like an all-in kill move here. We have a battery. We have our army there. We're ready to fight. Uh, and that's 
what would most likely happen if the Terran went for like, let's say, one of those like stim pack timing attacks, and no medevac, just straight up like three racks stim pack timing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, are basically basically we we don't want to like. You definitely <clears throat> do not want to be like, okay, let's put like three stalkers at the top base, three stalkers in the main, three stalkers that are bottom, middle, third. Because if he shows up with a stim timing and just attacks you, you're going to have your army staggered out and you're going to take tons of damage waiting for it to regroup. And you're probably going to lose right. bits of your army while it's regrouping and also your probes. Right, right, right. <clears throat> this is also the, the beauty of Blink. Your stalkers can be very fucking mobile. So we can go mm -hmm. from point A to point B super fast. Right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so we're, this is under the assumption that we're playing a macro game here. This is under the assumption that Terran's not all owning because if he was, all we would do is just make more gates and just current boost gateways with council and just make zealots and stalkers. And you get, once you get to a point too, like we got to where you have like around 10 stalkers, like eight to 10 stalkers ish, eight, nine, 10, somewhere around that number, you are going to stop making stalkers for a little bit and start making zealots. Because you can't afford the gas investment into the stalkers anymore because you're literally hitting zero repeatedly. So that's when you kind of chill out on it. You let your gas start going up again. And the reason why it's good to let it go up again a little bit is so not only can you afford charge, but we're going to make double forage here pretty soon. And we're going to start doing Chrono Boost upgrades on uh, double forage. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Game resumed. So Terran does do a timing and then, you know, like... Obviously, this is easy as fuck, but if the turn did a timing, you would want your army there anyways. That like the, When the AI hit us right there, that is actually kind of appropriate for when you would actually get attacked. Uh, Timing-wise. Okay. Obviously, it would be bigger than that. Uh, okay. And now, at this point in the game, too, we can start spreading out more pylons um, to deal with things that are going to be going on here. We can also transfer probes now to our next base. Up here, and notice how we're already expanding again while our, our fifth base has started while our fourth base isn't even done yet. It's because at this point, we're going to be expanding super fucking fast now because our probe is saturation is going to happen super fast now. Okay, and then we can start doing uh, what I like to call like, it's like these are like tripwire pylons or like safety pylons around the map like this. This just gives us like a vision net in front of our base. Which allows us to see what's going on uh, with, you know, a good amount of safety uh, in front of what we're doing. <clears throat> and now once we have five bases, I would say finally the last thing we want to do is like add our sixth base in. And now get ready to have a gateway explosion. So what we're doing in preparation for this is we're starting to not only spread pylons around our base, but we're also starting to spread pylons around my main base. So we have, we have pylons like kind of protecting the front of our base. We have nice vision net all over the place. But, and at this point too, you can stop sentry hallucinate scouting. Once you've confirmed you can make all these gateways, you're good to go. You don't need to keep scouting anymore. You can save the energy for force fields or guardian shield. Uh, but now we're going to go into a uh, crazy, crazy gateway explosion. Like fucking crazy gateway explosion. We're going to make like 10 gates right now. Chrono boost upgrades. We made four gateways. Make another like four gateways. And then we're going to make like four more gateways. We're literally doing a massive fucking gateway explosion right now. Make all our zealots. And we have like 90 probes right now. <clears throat> okay. And then we can transfer probes if we need to. I would say <clears throat> a good thing to do would be start transferring probes at this point to your new base, your new sixth base. And then every probe that you... Uh, keep mining out with after that you can start adding on more gas once your sixth base is fully saturated on the mineral line and that's when you transition out of zealots if that makes sense mm -hmm. and go into like more shit like you can even make your temple archives in preparation right now for that but we're not actually going to do it just yet because we're still spending gas on upgrades but notice how we're going to max out super fucking fast now with the ability to have uh, a lot of zealots here and our money's still fucking cruising. We could even make, honestly, even more gateways than what we already have. We could make another, like, four gateways. Get more upgrades going. And now we are maxing out right here with a massive Zealot army, Zealot blob here. And this is when you get really fucking... I'm going to pause it here. 
and say, this is the moment when you get really, really, really aggressive on Terran. Be, and it's really important to get aggressive right now because our money is crazy high. We have we have six probes on minerals and we have 84 probes. Or sorry, we have six probes on gas and 84 probes on minerals. We have a fucking shitload of minerals right now. And we are looking for trades. We are hoping Terran wants to fight us. We also have 1-1 one, one with this timing attack. So now behind this timing, we're going to get 2-2 two, two, and 3-3 three, three really fast. And now this is the point when I said this is like a branch build. Because everything you can do now behind this build is whatever the hell you want to do. You can go into more Robo with this. You can go Disruptors. You can go Colossi. You can go Immortals. You can go Archons. You can go Storm. You can go Dark Templar. You can go Stargate. You can go Carrier. You can do anything you want. You can really either just have a set standard playstyle with it, or you can have something that's more uh, freestyle, where you kind of do whatever you think is good on, in the moment. I would say if you don't really, if you're not really sure, and you just want something that's like consistent and solid, I would say what you should do right now is you should aim to have about five observers, um, and one of those or maybe two of those will go with your army, and at least three, if not four, observers will be spread out on the map. Just to give you really nice map awareness. Uh, basically, do the same thing with the, you did with the pylons. Where you have them in front of your base like we showed you here. Um, but do that with observers even more, further forward. More closer to the Terran's base. So you'd have observers kind of like spread out in key points. That would be like like maybe one in the open airspace between your base and his base. And like three more observers between like the... Uh, just the, the open areas between his bases that like would show you... Like, one in front of his natural, one in front of his third, one in front of his fourth. So you have, like, this big, wide net of vision to see where he's at at all times. Uh, if he moves out. And then, uh, so having, like, five observers is nice. But then if you want to have, again, something consistent and standard, I would say right now would not be a bad time to make one Stargate. And then as you take more gas, uh, you can literally take, like, I'm not even kidding. You could take gas... At every single base, once that Stargate is... or So, what you build that Stargate, and then you're making a ton of Zealots. And then you could make an additional, uh, like, four Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. And then you, so you'll be on, like, five Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. And once you have this setup going on, you could literally... Like, as you build the Fleet Beacon, and as you want to build the other Stargates, you literally take double gas at every single fucking base you have. So, you go from two gases on six bases to 12 gases on six bases all at once and then your gas would just explode and you would have this ability to remax into carrier and in storm with templar and then while you're doing that you have a massive mineral like you know just surplus where you're just going zealot 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 while you're switching into carriers and the stalkers, the idea with the idea with the stalkers is that they don't ever die. You uh, you only trade out the zealots, and then if the stalkers are like still there and the zealots are dead, you just back off, blink back, get out of there, reinforce with more zealot, go again. Don't lose the stalkers because you don't want to actually waste your gas repeatedly remaking stalkers all day. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I guess uh, conceptually, why is it so different uh, against Terran? Compared to Zerg, I mean, you're just like you're expanding super fast. You're making a bunch of zealots. Like, what is it about Terran that makes it so that this works? Terran suck against stalkers early. Zerg don't. Zerg have zerglings, and if you have stalkers running around like Rambo out there, you're just gonna get surrounded by zerglings and die. But with Terran, you can always disengage from Marines, and you're you you literally, if you don't want to take a fight with Terran, you don't have to take a fight with Terran. You can just run away all day. So you have no real fear of being out on the map mobile with stalker. But the thing about Terran is, is Terran kind of need, um, unless they're doing like, like I said, like the three racks, like stim pack timing bio shit. Unless they're doing that, where they're just going to do like one big punch into your base. They kind of need medevacs to be sustainable. And stalkers are really good at popping medevacs as well. So stalkers are just really good overall useful defensive tools to make, to shut Terran down early game. And then on top of that, once you have charge lots, charge lots are so fucking good against bio. <clears throat> they're also so good against siege tanks. So, uh, they're just... Zealots are super solid at just dealing with, uh... What Terran can throw at you on the ground early game. And Stalkers are really good at dealing with whatever Terran can throw at you on the, in the air department early game. 
Uh, so it's the same thing if the Terran goes Banshees, if the Terran goes Liberator, if the Terran goes Battlecruiser. Stalkers are good at shutting that all of those things down. Early game with Blink. Oh. Okay. Like, there's actually no opening Terran can do that Protoss feels weak against. It really just comes down to positioning and where you're at and where Terran is, which is why pylon placement is really important. Okay. <laughs> so if they're going to do these, like, drop timings, um, that you just use your stalkers. Do your best to use your stalkers to shoot the medevacs down as mm -hmm. they're uh, trying to get into your base. And those timings typically come around, like, five minutes. Five minutes uh, to five thirty. Uh, so it depends what kind of a drop it is. It could happen between four and five minutes if it's a little bit earlier. But if it's stim pack drop, yeah, after five minutes. Okay. What about the widow mine drops? Those. So like a, an armory based one that has like drilling claws and shit. That'll definitely be be on five minutes. But uh, if it's like just straight up widow mines where if they go off, then they detonate and uh, you can see them because there is no armory yet. That's gonna be sub five minutes. That'll be like again, like between four to five minutes. That's why, if you look at the replay though, those two pylons that are critical, which is the pylons in the top left of our base and then bottom right of our third base, those pylons are very important. And we got those; those would have been done in time for a any medevac that could hit us. So, if worst case scenario, if the medevac gets there and your stalkers aren't there yet to initially kill it right as it goes over the cliff, you can just move your probes. And then it's not a bad idea to manually detonate the widow mines with one probe at a time. So that if it is a really early medevac, you don't just let them sit there burrowed stealth while they're underground. You manually set them off with a one probe each. So if there's three widow mines, you send three probes to go die. But you don't stack them because one widow mine will kill all three then. You send three probes in and split them so that all three widow mines have to go off on all three probes. <clears throat> and then if you can see them after they've detonated, that means there is no armory. And uh, you can easily kill them if he stays there. And you don't need much time anyways. Your stalkers should be there soon regardless. Okay. Uh, the other problem I have with Terran is like these guys who uh, just build a bunch of um, like missile turrets and stuff. So you can't get like your uh, yeah. Phoenix into sea. That's great. Uh, if you, Dude, if he's making a bunch of turrets, that's so fucking bad for him in terms of uh, his investment. Uh -huh. Like... At that point, all you'd care about... I know what you're asking me. Like, you can't figure out what he's doing. But it, if he's making a bunch of turrets, that's, that in itself is, like, super fucking bad in terms of his investment. That'd be like you're making a bunch of cannons. And if you're making a bunch of cannons, you can't have a bunch of expansions and you can't have a bunch of gateways. Like, it's impossible so to... You, or, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, so if you see something like that, just expand... I mean, you just do this. Like, just expand as much as you can yeah. and build a bunch of... Treat, treat defensive play as greedy play. Okay. So, this what I just showed you is the example you would use versus a greedy player. Do the same fucking thing versus a, def a defensive player. Because greedy okay. and defensive are like the same thing. It means he's not going to be aggressive. And All right. and your build is greedy anyway. So if he is greedy, you're out greeting him. And if he's defensive, you're just taking map control while he's defensive. Okay. And then I guess. You're able to make this army pretty quick, so if this guy was just kind of turtling and doing like a battle cruiser, you're gonna get your army over there before they're able to make too many battle cruisers. Uh, so okay, if if the Terran, so okay, that could be a problem. Okay, so yeah, I'm glad you said that because that could be a problem if you just never fucking see a third base ever. You're like, okay, this guy just doesn't want to ever take a third base. We're at nine minutes. There's still no third, and I just made 45 zealots. That could be a fucking problem. So I would say if that's the case, definitely try to micro your phoenix a little bit so that you're not just constantly suiciding into the same fucking missile turret over and over and over and get some idea that he's going battle cruisers. Because if he actually is going battle cruisers and he's turtling on BCs, you probably actually want to take more gas and make more stalkers. Like, I would say you'd probably want to take gases on, like, your natural when your probe count is, like, at 70. When you're basically, when you, remember when I said you were starting your fourth base and it was like, and now you're going to start your fifth base? We're on six bases right now. But, like, we've been expanding like crazy. But, like, when, when, you're, when you, like, started your fourth base and then you're also starting your fifth base, that's around the time when you'd probably want to take more gas. At least two more gas. 
on like maybe your natural and just increase your gas income so that you can go back to making exclusively stalkers for a little while if he's just going BCs. You're definitely going to want to have maybe less zealot, maybe more stalker if he's going BCs. Because if he's going BCs and you're going crazy fucking zealots like this, all this means is that you're going to be running into his natural wall with zealots. And if he's really defensive there, if he, let's say he has a PF and he has a fucking bunker wall with depots, maybe he's walled off with fucking barracks. Like those are his gateways as is like as a Terran player. And then he's got like siege tanks behind it. Like you're fr probably going to have a horrible fucking fight there. And he's got BCs behind that that are just shooting the wall on the inside. You're not going to have a good fight. So yeah, if he's turtling into fucking mass BCs, you have to know he's doing that. Like there, you have to have some idea that he's doing that. That's why <clears throat> it is relevant when you see an army and when you don't see an army. If you see an army, mm -hmm. then you know what he's making. You're like, oh, cool. I, as I flew by his base, I saw his army, and I see that he's going crazy amounts of bio. Versus I flew over his base, and I saw a missile turret, and I saw nothing. I saw gases at every fucking base he has, and I literally saw no units. Where the fuck is he? Like, that's a problem. You definitely got to figure that out. And that, maybe even send an observer in. At that point, like try not to run over a turret, but maybe send an observer into a, a spot where you can. But yeah, okay. that's that's definitely not. I, maybe even poke the front of his base at that point if you don't even know what he's doing, like with with your initial stalkers. Like you need you need to figure out what the fuck he's doing. That that is that is actually. I'm gl I'm glad we're talking about this because it is actually like unacceptable to play blind. To the point where you're like you're at nine minutes, you're maxed out with zealots, and you still don't even know what the fuck he's making. That's not acceptable. You have to know what he's doing. Like right. this, this, like the amount of Terran players <clears throat> at higher level that are just gonna fucking turtle into mass BCs is not super common. It, well, it could happen, but it's not like oh yeah, this is like fifty percent of the time Terrans are gonna do this. No, it's not. That's not the case. Lower level gameplay, yeah, that, that probably is the case. You're gonna see tons of Terrans. And like fucking Platinum League and Gold League and Silver League that just turtle into mass BCs. That totally can happen. But, uh, and that they also can totally be the, the counterpart where the Protoss player that's at that level has no idea what the Terran's doing as well. Uh, and he's like, wait, what? BCs? Holy shit, you have 10 of them. I didn't even know you were making any. Like that, that can happen down there. But once you get to like Diamond Masters GM... You should have an idea that he is going BCs when he's going BCs, not after he has a fleet of BCs. So if you're if you're unsure what he's doing, get more aggressive about how you scout and maybe even use your army to do that. Like force a reaction. Be like, okay, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going to poke your base and what are you going to defend with? Because he's going to have to defend himself or he's going to die. Right. Okay. So if you do see the uh, battle cruisers, dude do stalkers do you try to make then do you try to transition to air i would say yeah if i was versing bcs what i would do is i would take more gas i would make stalkers and then i would start a stargate a little bit faster instead of going like templar archives and i would literally go into tempest i would go tempest stalker hmm. and i would still make probes i would still try to get a nice probe count like you did this game but i would change the build up to a point where i would start taking more gases faster and I would gradually take expansions a little slower. Just a little slower. Like, instead of having six bases fully saturated at nine minutes on the minerals, I would probably have six bases at, like, 11 minutes or 12 minutes. Because, I'd, because I wouldn't be able to actually take six bases that fast and actually use all the bases. Because instead of having a sixth mineral line and a fifth mineral line, I would have four mineral lines and four bases of gas. If that makes sense. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because uh, yeah, if you're fighting someone who's not even going to do a unit that zealots are useful against, you definitely need more gas. Because zealots are then obsolete. They're like literally worthless. Like they, They're good at killing bases, but if you're fighting a Terran who is two base going mass BCs, chances are high that he's going to have a walled off natural that's going to have a lot of defense on the natural that your zealots are going to have a horrible fucking engagement against. And then if you have nothing to stop, like, an aggressive blink into your base, with the, the teleport into your base with the BCs, then you're just going to die. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. But if you just... If, if it turns on two bases and you're on four bases and you're, like, maxing out on stalkers initially and you're going into quick tempest behind that, 
Like, you definitely have an advantage against species there. <laughs> and I would say, same thing, as I said before, with the Stargate count, I would say, like, five Stargates would be, like, an ideal number to have. And the reason why, the reason why five Stargates is really good is because chances are high you're going to max out and you're going to develop a bank and you can remax quicker that way. Because you can actually utilize five Stargates in burst cycles rather than maintaining them in production with them all game. Because you're not going to be able to do that if they're not your initial transition. Or, uh, sorry, your initial tech. They're what's a tra it's called a transition. So, uh, it's not something you're investing into right away. It's something you're investing into with your follow-up. So having more production allows you to have burst cycles of production when you actually can lose supply and then remake it quickly. Because I would, I would never tell you to go five stargates as an opener and be like, yeah, you can afford that. You definitely can't. But you can if you're doing a remax with it because you develop more bank with it. Right. So yeah, at this point, like I said, well, well I'm going to play out a little bit more of this game, okay? And this at this point yeah. now, we can do uh, the last little bit of it. What we'll do is we'll do a Stargate transition, okay? Yeah. All right, so this is, would be a standard Stargate transition, not like a Mass Tempest, quicker fucking Mass BC build kind of guy. Uh, so we would be attacking our opponent. About right now, we would take our uh, uh, Stargate somewhere in our base. We could take our weapon upgrade on our core now, as we start a Stargate. We get aggressive and poke the Terran, whatever. We uh, do whatever we can to be aggressive here. And we can start a Storm as well on our uh, Temple Archives, which is a super important upgrade to get as well. And then, um, you know, if you lose Zealots, whatever, you would just look at our, if you look at our bank, we have the ability to remake Zealots all fucking day super fast. Not a big deal. But now, once the Stargate's done, or once it's about to be done, right about now, we, w we could still remake all of our Zealots and shit all day. But right about now, when the Stargate's gonna finish, we would go gas, 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 <coughs> gas, gas. And then we can um, get ready now to build our fleet beacon. Chrono Booster upgrades one more time. And now go to each base we built gases at and literally saturate all of them. So saturate gases. Saturate gases. Saturate gases. And it's now going to undersaturate a lot of our minerals. So our minerals are still going to be good, but it's every base is going to be a little undersaturated. But again, we have 90 probes, so we can afford this. And now as soon as we started all of those gases, we can go into like any one of our other bases, wherever we can fit it, and go Stargate, Stargate, Stargate. Uh, Stargate. Make four more Stargates now. So we're going to a total of five Stargates and uh, and uh, what's it called? All right, why didn't it build that? What the fuck? Uh, just build it like right here then. Just five Stargates in all of our gateways. And again, we still have 6,000 minerals, so if we're still being aggressive, we can still be making Zealots like crazy, non-stop. But now we have all these Stargates. We can keep doing our upgrades. So Chrono Boost all upgrades. Weapon, weapon, weapon. Or weapon, weapon on uh, Forge and, and Core, and then armor on Forge. We have Storm done. But now if, if we keep losing units while we attack, as we take more and more fights and things die off more often, we now have the ability to uh, remax into carriers. And then you can also start Chrono Boosting the carriers because you're going to have so much fucking Chrono Boost energy available to you. That you can easily chrono boost your stargates like constantly at this point in time. So we're chrono boosting like everything. Or actually, we, we actually just ran out. I literally just ran out. Uh, the, the five stargates is definitely going to deplete you a lot faster. But upgrades are looking great. Carriers are coming out. We can st again still even if your your five stargates are in full production right now, still get aggressive, still trade around zealots. And now, at this point, you can be a little bit more liberal with losing your stalkers because it's supply that you want to become carriers eventually over time anyways. Try not to lose your entire army right away. Try not to be like, all right, I'm going to throw my army away into the point to where I'm actually under max. Like, that's a little fucking scary if you dive your whole army in suicide to the point to where, like, you're going to get counterattack now. That's not what you want. You want to maintain control, so bleed out units. Like, losing zealots here and there, like, if I were to send these zealots to go die... 
as long as it's sub count of what my gateway count is in total, it's totally fine. And right now we have literally 20 fucking gateways. So if I send out waves of zealots and rounds of 20 fucking zealots, which is literally 40 fucking supply, that's okay. I can lose all these fucking zealots. Not a big deal. Because I can remake that in a second. But if you lose more than 40 supply every cycle of 20 seconds, that's going to start getting excessive and you're actually opening yourself up to a counterattack. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, the, as long as you're maintaining like your carrier reproduction cycles, then you're good to go. You can get a, you know some Templars, get like six Templar with it too. And once you have, uh, once your weapons on your carriers are like plus two, which is what we have right now, we're getting plus three weapons right now on the core. But once you have like plus two weapons on the carrier, and you have like ten carrier out of your uh, out of your Stargates, because you've made two rounds of the Stargate. At that point, you can definitely send your carriers aggressive and go for a timing attack. And now you can start getting shield upgrades on your forge and continue Exhausted. weapon upgrades into then eventually armor upgrades on your uh, on your core. But once you have like 10 carriers, you can start getting aggressive and going uh, <coughs> going aggressive on the Protoss with uh, your fleet, essentially. And now we have 10 carriers. So our army right now is super fucking strong. Uh, and then... This isn't even the most ideal situation right now. This is like still a little suboptimal because if we if you still have stalkers and shit, like this you should look at this supply, the gateway supply here, as this kind of shut this kind of sucks. This army kind of sucks ass. So <clears throat> you could now do go throw this away. You'd be like, alright, if I have any stalkers left, whatever, if I have a sentry left, go suicide, go die. And remake with better supply, like more carrier or something like that. Another really good thing you can do that we didn't talk about, once you're in the stage of the game where you have a lot of money, you're not spending it anymore, and you're getting ready to go into a death ball fleet to finish the game with, it's always a good idea to go into this structure right here, get a dark shrine, and go into like a couple of cannons and a battery at all your bases. Transfer probes around as well if they're oversaturated. But cannon, battery, your bases as well. That way... Um, you know, you're you're more defensive against someone who would do like drop harass to you, yeah. so you're not so susceptible to getting attacked uh, from the Terran. Then you can make a little bit more extra cannon battery on like outer bases, like kind of what we just did right there. Like bases that are gonna most likely get dropped on the side of your base, you can make a couple extra cannons at those bases just to be extra safe. But like on the inner bases, like your main natural third, you're probably fine getting just a couple cannons and a battery if you want cannon battery at these bases too. But if you have like a couple cannons and a couple batteries, it just helps defend yourself. And then you always have the, the means to, um, if the Terran player drops you, let's say like at this base, you could be like, cool, I'm going to warp, uh, if I had the Dark Terran down right now, I could be like, we can warp in like four DTs and like four Zealots. And let's say he's dropping you over here too, you could warp in some DTs and some Zealots. Mm -hmm. And then you're good to go. You're like, cool, I uh, have the ability now to um, go like, you know, some DT, some Zealot, some DT, some Zealot. And now both bases can be defended by, you know, more shit that'll take hits, which are the Zealots, and more shit that'll kill quickly, which is the DTs. And then you know, as soon as you defend your base, you can always send these out to go die again, go aggressive, whatever you want to do with it. <coughs> but yeah, having, um, having a Dark Shrine and having some Static D around your base is definitely not a bad idea at this point in the game, just to make sure you don't lose the map. Because the carriers are no longer like stalkers, they're really immobile. They're really fucking slow, but they're really powerful. So you want to have things that, that cover the the weakness of no mobility. Like the cannons and right. DTs. So, how are you feeling? Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, pretty good. Um, are you doing any upgrades uh, from the fleet beacon, or is everything just from the no, forge there's... and the cyber? So this is literally just for Phoenix, for Void Ray, and for Tempest only. Okay. So it doesn't okay. anything with carrier. And if you're doing a standard build and you're just doing a carrier transition, you don't even need. You just need the fleet beacon to be able to make carrier. That's it. But if you were playing against like let's say BCs, and you actually wanted Tempest, definitely get the Tempest upgrade. But if you're and if you're actually gonna, and this is why it's a freestyle build. If you actually want to go for a lot of Phoenix, if you decide that's what you're gonna do this game, definitely get the Phoenix upgrade. And if you decide you're gonna go for a lot of Void Rays in some games, definitely get the Void Ray upgrade. 
But if you're not making Phoenix, Void Ray, or Tempest, you don't need any upgrade here. Okay. And then always try to stay on top of your bases too. Like as soon as shit mines out, definitely fix it. And fix your bases because at this point, remember how we fucked up our probes and stopped mining so much? Send probes somewhere where they can still be effective. Because uh, we, we took off mineral lines everywhere and made gases. And then, again, once you're on six bases, you're going to get in this like safety net where you're like, okay, I don't want to expand anymore for a while. I'm, I'm chilling on my bases. Because you're expanding so fucking fast in the early game. But don't forget... Once you have control of the game with like carriers and shit, you still do need to expand again for like a seventh base and go beyond mm -hmm. it so that way you're not just all in. Um, but you will have this like lull for a little bit where you're going to be on six bases for like a good like five minutes or like seven minutes before you take another base. Because it's going to take a while now for you to, to have such spread out probes to mine out everything. But you will mine it out eventually. Like you can see we're mining it out now. So now we would definitely need a new base. Otherwise we're kind of fucked here. And then if there's not enough bases on the map, let's say let's say some fucking hell the game is not over and you have a bank like this where it's like it's never going to be that high. But let's say you have like a bank that's worth like 10,000 in total and you're like, okay, the map is mining out and I literally have too many probes everywhere. Like every base is oversaturated and I'm still mining out more and more and more as time goes on. At this point, if there's no new active available bases, you could literally just send probes to go die. And increase your supply count for your army. Because you still have 90 fucking probes right now. Mm. So instead of having 90 probes and only available resources for like 45. You could just send out whatever whatever probes deplete themselves out and have nothing to do. You could send those to go die. And uh, yeah, just increase your army size. Make more carriers. Or something like that. Because <clears throat> yeah, you will eventually mine the map out for sure. Uh, this, this style definitely mines the map out faster than other styles. All right. Uh, so, uh, with with what we just talked about, do you have any questions about anything? Um, I don't think so. Cause um, that, and I'll I'll send you that replay too. I'll name it. Um, oh my god, I just hit watch replay, but now I'm going back into it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, but yeah, that that style, it's uh. Again, it's it's the branch part of the build is it's it's gonna be there's always like a sequential same thing up until nine minutes where it's you want to scout for all ins or not getting all in, go about the build as best you can. If if you do get all in, you just eventually transition after you defend back into uh, your standard play. If you don't get all in, then you just do the standard play like we showed you all together, uh, like um, the. The way that build went is ideally how you want it to go. Uh, with, you know, like not taking too many gateways too fast. Because, again, we're not trying to launch a timing attack. We're trying to expand. And then once we have our expansions, then we do a timing. So, macro-wise, the way we... The example we just showed is how you would do it. Uh, All-in, defensive-wise, you make more gates early to not die. After you defend timing, you transition back into the build as best you can into what we just did here. Get back up to the 6 base, 90 probe situ situation as fast as you can. You'll just have... It'll take you a little longer to get there, and then your gateways will be a little bit out of order. But then eventually you still go back up to, like, 20 gateways. And then have your... You have everything, like your double forge, your Templar archives, your robo, all that shit's still normal. Um, <clears throat> once you get to those points. Uh... And then, once you're at that point, that not, that like mark where you have all those fucking gates and all of your uh, bases, that is when you can pick and choose whatever fucking build you want to do, and you can do anything. I can. I the only reason why I recommended carrier for you is because it is the most versatile um, uh, <coughs> transition that you can do. It can deal with the most things consistently, like. If I were to tell you to do, like, a Colossus transition, it would be really good against certain things, but it'd be really bad versus, like, Air Terrans. Like, if you're like, well, Vibe, he's going Mass Liberators now, and what the fuck do I do here? I mean, okay, well, Colossus are not good there. Um, so, like, other other comps have, like, weaknesses to more shit, but Carriers have the least amount of weakness. Mm -hmm. Because the only weakness Carriers really have, I'm not even kidding, is, like, Widowmine Marine. If, like, they're basically... If Terran has a way to essentially... Just demolish your fucking uh, interceptors. 
Or if the Terran had like mass Vikings and wanted to like focus fire your carriers out. And he had like also Marines covering the Vikings uh, to an extent to like buy them time to kill carrier. Like these things might be a problem for carrier, but the beautiful thing about things that carriers are weak against is high Templars completely hard counter them. So you have, if it's like, oh, he's got mass Marines and one of mines. Well, you throw a storm into those Marines and suddenly he doesn't have mass Marines anymore. Same thing, with, same thing with like mass Viking. If he's got mass Viking focusing down your carriers and you're just getting like one shot on each carrier, throw a couple storms on those Vikings and suddenly a lot of the Vikings are dead. So uh, like Templars are a great, like Templar plus carrier is a super versatile composition to just throw at your opponent. And then you can also throw at like constant zealot counterattacks at their base. Like if you have just some like 30 supply open or 40 supply open or 20 supply open, whatever, and you're just doing waves of fucking zealot, uh, just throwing them at like, like let's say you're you're hitting one side of the map with your carrier Templar and then you're hitting the other side of the map with just waves of zealot repeatedly. Like you're going to break the map open pretty fucking fast. It's very hard to deal with that. Got it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just read uh, okay. or, or sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was gonna say yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. I have, I have some, I have some uh, practicing in front of me, so I'll uh, get that in, and then we can come back and do the third one. Yeah, no, sounds good. Um, yeah, the, the with this build, the hardest thing to do, the hardest thing to get your to wrap your head around is, it's gonna be understanding your limits. Uh, as to how greedy you can be because it's going to take some learning when it comes to your scouting to know if you're actually available to take a third base or not or a fourth base or not or a fifth base or not. So I would say follow this rule and it will help you more than not. And the rule is when in doubt, just expand. And if, if you're sure you're about to get attacked by an all-in, defend it. But if you're not sure, just fucking expand. To roll the dice and expand. And try to learn from your games where you don't understand. Like, try to put more emphasis in understanding. But don't ever sit there and constantly, do, like, default to not expanding. Because if you constantly, if, if you play this playstyle and you keep deciding, I'm not going to expand. I'm just going to fucking turtle. This style completely becomes void and shit. You have to, like, test your limits with what you can be with greedy with this style. You have to, like... A, like because this is the thing when i when i play this way on like ladder for instance the people will literally be like jesus christ vibe you're getting attacked right now and you're expanding again what the what isn't this too greedy and then suddenly i defend the attack and then i have another base and then i'm just cranking out like crazy like that's how you have to play this play style you need a lot of income to make a lot of zealot because if you don't have a lot of income you're not going to have a lot of zealot and then it's not it's going to completely make the style feel like shit so yeah when in doubt just keep expanding and try to just play the, what we just showed you uh, here in this re in this replay you have. Uh, okay. Yeah, you have to make a good economy. Otherwise, it's just going to feel weak. But yeah, the early game, the, the first nine minutes, the, the early game prep and is going to be the hardest thing to learn with this play style because you're going to have to have the growing pains of... Uh, just feeling confident to do it and also not fucking things up because you're definitely vulnerable. If you're expanding this fucking fast, you are definitely vulnerable if you don't take pylons properly in proper spots and if you're not uh, mitigating things well with your army movement when things happen. And that just takes practice. And okay. if, you have, if you have questions about that, you had, you had some as well, which I'm glad you asked. But if you have any more that come to mind right now before we're done, feel free to ask. But, um, yeah, otherwise, <coughs> yeah, um, you can also experiment if you want to, once you're at that nine minute mark, uh, that like that, it doesn't necessarily have to be nine minutes because some games are different than other games, but that mark and the replay we have here, like it symbolizes when your mineral phase is done and you can now continue mineral phase if you want to and take a seventh base and an eighth base and a ninth base, you can extend it if you really wanted to and just keep making mass fucking zealots. Or you can transition into something that costs gas. And it can be whatever the fuck you want. But 90 probes is what you're aiming for. Don't go above 90 probes. That's too much then. Okay. Cool. 
All right, well, I guess uh, at this point, then I'll, I'll say I wish you the best of luck with the build. It's uh, it's really fun. It's a fun build. It's definitely going to feel like you have a lot of control when you start getting good at it because you'll be able to always keep tearing on defense uh, once you have the zealot phase and you're just slamming them over the head with like a sledgehammer repeatedly. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I... Uh, I wish you the best of luck with it, and dude, I guess thank you again for doing another coaching lesson. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, of course. Much. Of course, of course. Well, I'll hit you up for the, uh, so we can make the uh, schedule the next one. Okay, that sounds good, and uh, I uh, have a good rest of your night, and thanks again, dude. Okay, thanks. You too, man. Appreciate All right. it. All right. Uh, I'll send All you, right. Oh, but, and also, like as always, I'll have the VOD you by tomorrow, and I'll send you the replay in just a minute here. But um, Sounds good. All right. Have a good one, man. Uh, much love. Okay. All right. Thanks, bye. All right. See you, dude. All right, guys, that has been a coaching lesson. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. That was like a diamond level lesson, maybe like more like diamond to masters level lesson right there. Um, you could even say that was a GM level lesson as well. I'm not even kidding. Like if you just get really good at executing that, uh, you could easily play this way in GM against Terrans. Uh, but yeah, much love. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one, whatever it is. Take it easy and peace.